Good G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, having too much fun in the new studio, but what we're doing, this is the part two review, this is the flight review of the Vlyfly X150. Now, if you haven't seen the part one bench breakdown when we looked at the text and specs, the little card should pop up here, go and watch that, but this is the fun stuff, this is where we take it out to the field, we're going to fly it around, I'll show you guys some DVR, we'll hand it over to Grumpy Trev, crash test Cal, hit it with the speed gun, and maybe crash into Cal's right shield and see how this little bad boy holds up. So, that's the intro, let's get on with the fun stuff, cut out the field and rip this little thing around in three, two, one. Radio out here in the field. Actually, I'm gonna unplug my goggles so I don't get a flat battery. We're about to rip it around. It's a little bit windy. There's a lot of stuff going around, but I'm gonna show you guys some DVR with a little Wi-Fi four inch drone. We're not gonna show a GoPro or anything like that. We'll hand it over to Grumpy Trev, crash test Cal, and then we're gonna hit with Speed Gun Sally and see just how fast can this little four inch bad boy go. All right, let's do it. Okie dokie, here we go. So uh, first things first, I do want to apologize. I left that OSD on and yes, it frustrates me too, but luckily that's easy enough to turn off in the beta flight configurator. So no biggie there, that'll take about two seconds to fix. Now there's probably a few things I want to talk about. So it looks like this thing is ripping around and let me say it is pretty quick for a little four inch racer, but it's not quick. And this is the part that I think is really important. It's not quick versus some other things out there. So this is definitely first and foremost, a beginner sort of drone in how it handles. It's light, it's snappy, it handles well. It is super silky smooth when you're flying around. It does feel great. But if you're really trying to drop the hammer, like I'm guessing I'm really pushing up there in the throttle. If you're really trying to drop the hammer, you're not gonna get that crazy speed that you would get if uh, you know you were versing some Americas or some of those top notch five inch races or those sorts of things. Because look, a lot of other quads go a lot faster than this one. And this one, it just felt a little bit lacking for me in the speed. Now I know in a moment we hand over to Grumpy Trev and he talks about it as well. And he might not notice it as, as much because I think it's something you'd only notice if you're sort of that more experienced pilot and you're going quick around the racetrack all that sort of stuff. So I'd say for a lot of pilots and a lot of beginners out there or people who don't really fly that fast, it's going to seem perfectly adequate. But if you're one of those expert pilots out there who's going to rate, no, I'm not saying I'm an expert pilot, but I feel like I've flown a lot of quads. And if you're looking for the best and the fastest of the fastest, well, this one's just not going to be that because it's got the light motors, it's got the buttery props, and it's all made, I think, for that beginner user experience where it's really nice to fly around and you're sort of sacrificing some of the speed to do that. Now, probably the other thing, you know, being a beginner, you want it to kind of be durable. And I'm not sure how this frame is going to hold up. We do have a pretty decent crash here. So I was surprised the only thing that came loose was the antenna. And overall, that's just something that's going to have to be tested in the long run, crash after crash after crash, and see how those components going to hold up. Anyway, what we should do, let's hand it over to Grumpy Trev and see what he thinks. All righty, Devin Trevor. Here we go. Rock and roll. Very clear camera. Yeah, it's a Fox Air camera in there. You're a fan. Yeah, oh, that's bloody great. That is really, it's clear. The colours are nice. You could have turned that OSD thing yeah, off. Yeah, I know. I did leave a lot of that sort of stuff on. Yeah, it's got the horizon bars and all that sort of crap on there. But this is bloody nice. <laughs> is it better than you're expecting? Oh, way better. This is so locked in. Oh, jeez, this is great. Why don't we fly this earlier? Love it. Colours are really good, like I said, that's really nice. Yeah. Are you getting any oscillations or anything? Nah, like this is, it's just really, really nice. It does have some, like, I guess, uh, less aggressive props on there, a little bit sort of more floaty, maybe. Are you getting any dropouts or anything like that? Because you're going a fair way out. Nah, this is the, I wouldn't be going that far if I, look, it's, the video, what's on this? What sort of, just uh, the normal, it's got its own special VTX in there. It's a great VTX, hardly. Just a little tiny blip every now and then. Oh, I like this. Everything's good about this so far. It's, it's uh, like I said, a great VTX. The camera's clear. It's so locked in, it's not funny. This thing's out of the box. Looks nothing you've got to do to this. I, I'm a fan, big fan. Whoops. I, uh... Right, now we can hear again. Really don't want to bring this in. Why? This is just so much fun to fly. And look, surprisingly, it is very windy here. Yeah. And this thing... Is it getting pushed around by the wind? Not at all. Like, I'm not getting blown around or anything. I really like this. Damn, I, the battery's getting down. I'm going to have to bring it in, but... Uh, <laughs> I do... You're a big fan of this. This really is nice. Oh, oh, oh he's 
he's crashed and boom. Oh, what, what, is that your special landing? That's my special landing. Oh, the Olympics. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the drone Olympics. The, the, uh, oh, just, that was like doing the Louvre, I think. Or the Luge or what do the they call Louvre? the thing? What, what do they call the freaking thing? Is that the Luge. Yeah, Luge. Yeah. Isn't the Louvre where they keep those paintings? That's right. That's the Louvre. Yeah. Thank yeah, yeah. you, CTC. Battery warm. Oh, it's not too bad. I guess only Grandpa was flying it, though. Uh, all right, Grumpy Trev. So I guess uh, final thoughts? Well, it goes a lot better than it looks. Yeah, so you weren't a fan of how it looks? It's not the prettiest thing out there. Don't know how this, this thing would stand up to a crash. Yeah, I, I didn't I, really. I worry about like these little standoff parts yeah. and there's a lot of exposed sort of board there. But at least it's, you know, they're metal, I guess. I mean, Stu did hit the flag pretty hard before and hit the ground quite hard and there's no damage. We just took a couple of nicks out of the props. So it's stronger than what it looks as well. Um, right. Pretty impressed. Look, I really do like this. Performance, this was a nine, absolutely. Okay. Um, and what about value for money? Well, probably I'll get a bit of seven for value for money. Okay. But uh, certainly, look for performance. It was definitely an eight. Yep. So You liked it? I really liked it. Um, not real much of the design, but it looked it flew okay. Out of the box, this thing was great. So really was locked in. So don't judge a book by its cover. No, definitely so. not. It was shit hot to fly. So really did like it. Too easy. All right, let's hand it over to CTC. Cal, whatever you're doing there, old man, putting your reading glasses on. Have a closer look at this thing. <laughs> you sound like a teacher. Oh, All right, uh, so what do you think about the Viafire little four inch? It's interesting, it looks pretty nice. Very small motors for a four inch. Yep. So that'll be interesting to see how they perform. I don't think you could, uh, I don't think you could put props on that are any more aggressive than that. Yep. Um, the way the stack is built, it's built off the Standoffs, these uh, brass standoffs. So uh, that's weird how that's all a structural part of the quad. The stack is part of the structure, and all Do you those think that's little. a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. Look, they they seem to be brass standoffs, so they'll probably hold up all right. But normally, I would uh, shy away from something like that. But I've never seen one with brass standoffs all the way up like that. So we'll reserve our judgment for later. All right, let's do it. Let's put a pack on and rip it around. Okay. Well, that's about where I'm at at the moment. <laughs> Calvin's getting real angry. All right. All right, Cal, let's do it. See if you can't crash in the first two seconds again, like last time. All right, where's the quad? Spin it around the other way so I can take off into the open air. You want? Oh, you want to take off behind us? Yeah. Oh. We spun it around, Cal, because you're worried about crashing. Alrighty. The quad's probably had a heart attack. It's fallen over. It's out of date now already by the time it's how long it's taken you. And he's crashed! He's done it! Oh. Oh. <laughs> he just broke a record, Cal. So that was about one second. Is uh, that the wind's fault? Yeah, that's your fault for the way you put it down. <laughs> Alright. Are we ready? Yeah, mate. Alright. For a four inch quad, I don't know. It's light, it's very manoeuvrable. It'd be a great little quad around a tight track. Yeah. But for a medium to long track, I don't think it's cutting it. Yeah. I don't think it has the uh, top end. Those hybrid bullnose props. Hey, do you find this wind, which is pretty crazy, do you find that that's pushing it around? It is. As soon as we get above the treetops, I start getting pushed around a bit, but yep. that's no big deal. Unless you're Trev. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very agile. But um, look, I'm not sure if that prop and motor combination is the best that this uh, frame could do. Yep. I'd probably go, uh, if I was going to go four inch, I'd probably go all the way up to an 1806 on it. But uh, okay. I don't know how that little frame would handle that extra weight it from the motors. Have, it does have some very thin arms. It does. So um, look, I know uh, Brother Hobby even have some, I think, 1605s or something like that. But uh, I'm just not 100% sold on on this even though it does go well it's really agile and it's going to go great around a tight track but for a big open track i don't know it's not as good as the xjb that's for sure but it's not really fair comparison a three inch and a four inch but you think the four inch would go better but it doesn't what about the camera because i know trevor was camera. sort of gushing about it what did you think the camera's great it's got a little foxy micro in there yep i've got no issue with the camera so much so i didn't even think about it until you mentioned it then because it is very clear any dropouts or anything like that no no vtx is performing well pids you don't need pids with this all right i'm gonna just 
Where are you? Over there somewhere. Okay. I what ran, happened? I ran that battery out. <laughs> it's alright, it's my battery. Alright, uh, I guess I'll wait till you come back with it then. Alright. You want a hand looking for it, Cal? <laughs> I think it's over there. Yeah, you're out there somewhere. Too easy, Kel. Too easy. Uh, and what happened there, Kel? Did the battery go flat or? Uh... I did. I wasn't working, watching my uh, my voltage, and it just did an emergency landing. Ah, oh, okay. No worries. That's what I do all the time. <laughs> it's a sweet looking little rig, though. I'm just working out, trying to work out how you could make it a bit better. I love the frame. Just, there's just a lot of potential there. I think you could do a few things to make the scale a lot better. The camera was great. Alrighty, Cal. So I guess sum it up now. You've got it back. You ran out of battery, but what did you think? I think it's a sweet little frame. It's really been beautifully made and really well planned out. The only thing is, is the power plant itself. I'd probably go for a, a more powerful, slightly bigger motor. Yep. And. Uh, so you'd go a bit more aggressive, bigger, bigger prop, I guess, more aggressive props, yeah, well, you're more not gonna, aggressive you're motors. Not, with these motors, you're not going to be able to put more aggressive props on this. Yeah. So I, I'd be looking at upping the motor so I could do that. Right. And, That's uh, pretty windy, but give us Cal's famous four words. <sighs> it's almost there. It's almost, all, almost is one word. It's almost there. That's Come three on, words, Stuart. mate. You're a school teacher, mate. <laughs> was, was. Too easy. Alright, so they're three. Three today. Alright, thanks. Alrighty. Alright, gents, what do we got? With this wind, so this is probably pretty crazy, not ideal conditions, but we'll still give it a go, have some fun. What do you think how's gonna go today? The top speed we're gonna reach with the little Barfly 4 inch. Um, I think it'll do 80. 80? Trev? 94. 94. I'm gonna go 85. Alright, let's do it. Suit up, Cal. Ooh. Okay guys, let's give this bike a ride. Four inch ago, but I just wish it had a little bit more power for the kind of tracks that we operate on. Let's have a look. Let's see what this thing can do. Ready when you are. Make sure we've got enough room. Show us what you got, Firefly. Here we go, here we go. 77. Looks like I was on the money, guys. Look, with these little motors, with these props, I just don't think it's going to get much over about 85 max. It flies really well, very controllable, very agile. Quads cannot be judged by speed alone. 78! So, there you go. I was right, we're not going to get the top end out of this with this current power plant. 80! 80! mile an hour 78 mile an hour oh here we go oh, get out of here get out of here you mongrel i'll smash you to pieces So there you go guys, a little Vifly. It's a sweet little machine. How'd we go, Cal? We got about... Was it 79, did you say? I said 80. 80. So that was pretty much about where it was going. Yeah, too easy. Yeah, you can steer it. it was you, yeah. Like I said, on a, on a tight track, it'd be great. It's very agile, no tuning required. Yeah, it was, even at that top throttle, it wasn't bouncing around or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. it looks very controllable. Alrighty, so there it is. And there's my, I guess, part two review or the final review of the Vlyfly X150. And I've really got to give it to the guys. I think they're coming a long way from where they started to the drones they're releasing now. They do fly a lot better. They're a lot better sort of user experience. I love the new, new not new features, but features that are friendly to new pilots like the display on the back, the rock solid crystal clear video, that stuff is all really good. And the weight limit, absolutely fantastic when you're trying to keep it under that 250 grams. Now I guess on the flip side, it wasn't the most powerful, even though it was buttery smooth flying around. I know Trevor really liked it, but it wasn't as aggressive as I was liking. So I would have liked it to rip a lot harder and go a lot faster. 
but I understand not everybody's sort of after that market in a drone. So if you're just a beginner pilot out there and you're looking to pick something up that is very easy to fly, has great video and is very smooth on the sticks, then this is definitely a good choice. The only other issue I have too is in the long term, I've never seen this sort of stack design before and how it all goes together with these sort of brass standoffs, all that sort of stuff. I don't know how that's gonna hold up a long-term durability-wise because your components are a little bit exposed. Anyway, what do you guys think? Drop your comments down below. What do you think about the Flyfly X150? I'm getting pretty good at pronouncing that name. Subscribe for my FPV-related content, and as always, happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.